Hello, this is Arl from Valoi. Today we have a, the first part of uh, three videos about the new e Valoi EC35 unit. So this part is going to be about uh, kind of exactly what's in the box and what you get, a little bit about the kind of compatibility with uh, different cameras and then I'll show you kind of how to set it up and, and assemble it. Um, so let's talk about the box first. Um, the box is relatively large because it comes with uh, quite a lot of different things and opening it up, uh, the first thing you'll see is the manual. Um, the manual is quite important, there's, uh, there's a lot of important information here about uh, things like lenses and compatibility but there's also cautions about things uh, that you should and, and shouldn't do and there are some uh, tips and uh, tricks about scanning and what kind of settings to use for your camera. So we really do recommend that you uh, look through this. Uh, I know pe people usually don't look through manuals but uh, we try to make it friendly and uh, quite helpful. There's some information about your light source that you can uh, read through if you want. Then there's the product itself. Uh, it comes in four parts uh, that all splits apart. The main housing sits here. It's a, uh, it's a 9 on 12 plastic housing and the holder sits inside here. This is the th standard 35 millimeter holder. Uh, on top is the rotation ring that's pre-assembled and uh, attaches to the tubes on top. On the bottom, you can see the light source and the controls for that that I'll go through in a second. On the side here, you find the uh, lock and uh, release for the holder. I'll also talk about that afterwards when we talk about changing holders. In addition, uh, you have two tu sets of tubes here. Uh, the longer set is uh, three 40 millimeter distance tubes. So these are different from extension tubes that you typically find in, on, for macro use. Um, they are meant to sit between the EZ35 unit and the front of the lens as opposed to between the camera and uh, the back of the lens. So this is something that people kind of confuse a bit. So we call these the distance tubes. These are the 40 millimeter distance tubes and there are three of them. Then there's the uh, kind of normal kit. Here you get two um, 40 millimeter tubes and then one medium tube that's 20 millimeters and one short tube that's 10 millimeter for fine adjustments. With these three types of tubes, uh, you should be able to use essentially any type of macro lens within reasonable focal lengths. We'll talk more about lens compatibility in a second. Finally, in the back, in a little bag, uh, you find seven filter adapters for different filter threads on cameras. So the EZ35 has a 62 millimeter filter thread on the tubes and these screw onto that tube to uh, give you the uh, uh, final filter, th filter thread for your camera. In addition, you'll find a, an Allen key, four millimeter size Allen key here that uh, is used for the uh, holder lock. So, um, in addition to what comes in the standard kit, this is everything, um, we have some accessories that you can purchase separately. So uh, the EZ35 comes with a interchangeable holder system and currently there are two holders and in the future there'll be also a slide holder in addition to several uh, kind of odd format holders. Um, and these just slide into the EZ35. This is the sprocket holder. Here you get the 35mm frame, the whole frame, plus a little bit extra to show the sprocket. So there's just, we've tried to cover a minimal amount while still keeping flatness very good across the frame. In addition to the extra holders and replaceable holders, the um, EZ35 can also mount this duster. I'll just quickly show how to mount it. The um, duster is, is the same kind of plastic that the EZ35 is, but it has two uh, anti-static brushes City, uh, that you push film through when you uh, before it goes into the EC35. Um, you attach it by using these two thumb screws. There are two, you can see two um, brass inserts on the top here, and you just screw it, screw it on like that. And then you can push your film through there. It will clean uh, loose dust uh, from the film and give you a bit cleaner scans. So. Um, 
Before we go any further on talking about lenses and different cameras, I'll just quickly show you uh, the uh, removing this kind of holder. This, for this you'll need the bag of uh, extra parts and you'll need this Allen key. So, as I said, on the side here, there's a screw that you need a, the key to operate and for the holder to come out, you need to take off the duster, just put that aside, um, and then you have to unscrew the screw quite a bit, and then you can just push it. Uh, you push it away from, uh, towards this um, opening here. And you'll see that when this holder slides out, it has an arrow on it that indicates which direction it goes in. So you can think of this as the entrance for the holders. Uh, so I'm just going to swap it out with this other holder and the arrow goes again in on the entrance and then it's, uh, there you go. And then what's important when you've pushed it all the way through, okay now it's a bit loose, you want to tighten it. However, you don't want to over tighten it. This screw will uh, bend the holder a little bit, so just tighten it lightly, tighten it a little bit more and you can kind of feel the holder starting to get firm in the holder. And now I can no longer push it out from the, from the uh, back side. Um, and at this point it's plenty tight. You don't need to, don't over tighten it. You will bend the holder and potentially break the holder but also make it unusable for film because it, it uh, makes the path too narrow. So now that we have this uh, holder mounted in here, uh, I'm going to mount it on a camera and it's showing you the different tubes you can use and the different setups we can have. Okay, so now I've taken everything out of the box, gotten that out of the way, and um, we have the tubes and a few different cameras here. Um, the first step to choosing, uh, to, to mounting the EC35 on the camera is uh, selecting one of the filter threads. Most cameras, uh, once lenses will say what kind of filter thread they have on it. Uh, this says on the front, it usually has a, a, a circle with a, a line through it, and it says uh, 52 after that. In this case, this one says 49, and back here we have a 62. If your lens is a 62, you don't need any of these, but for anything else, you'll need an adapter. Um, so, for example, for the for this one, that's 52. We have the 52 to 62 millimeter adapter, and it just screws onto the filter threads. I would just do this ahead of time, and you can always just leave this on if you want to. This one already has a 49 mounted. Uh, and it's quite deeply set. It's usually sometimes easy to turn on the camera, focus it a bit further out, and then take off the, uh, put on and off the uh, filter thread adapter. Uh, once that's done, you need to select a, a length of tube. What's important here is that um, the length of tube you um, need to choose is based on the focal length. So focal length is the, uh, how much, how much zoomed in your lens is. So it has a 70 millimeter lens and there's a 40 millimeter lens, um, but they're on different formats. So the, the actual amount of um, telephoto effect you get from them is different. Uh, the easiest way to find out how, to, uh, how much you need is um, to take a piece of film or something about the size of um, a film. And uh, there is actually a little illustration in the uh, manual uh, that's the size of a film frame, and you can use that to uh, to focus on. But taking your macro lens, a lot of macro lenses have these kind of markings. So they say one to one, one to one point five, one to two. Um, if you have one that says one to one, like it should, uh, you can pre-focus it to that. Like I'll do on this one to one, and then uh, just focus on a piece of film and. Roughly, roughly there. Nope. Oh. Oh. There we go. So as we can see here, being in focus with this short distance of film, we know that we don't need all of these tubes. We can start with maybe one long tube, and even that might be too much. So I would start with this, uh, put on the camera, focus it, um, turn on the light source and put some film in there even if, if you want to be quite precise uh, and focus it. And if it's uh, if you just can't focus uh, close enough then you need to add a little bit more. If you are seeing too much of black around the frame 
you can remove a bit of uh, ring and so starting with the 40 millimeter is good good uh, start but then you also have the 20 and the 10 millimeter to do fine adjustments you can see here that so i've just left these mounted on without the unit you can see here that uh, this uses three 40 millimeters and one 20 millimeter. It's quite a long lens and therefore it requires quite a long tube. The lens, uh, lens I have in front here only requires one 40 millimeter tube. So it'll depend, depend on the focal length in the camera. Just take your time and go through these tubes and find the one that's right for you. Uh, you will only have to do this once and then you can note it down for yourself how much you need or just leave it on the unit. Once you have gotten these tubes on, and you're probably on the last, uh, last round of testing, just screw on the EC35. I like holding the camera with the tube in my right hand and then just screwing with my left hand. So that's the final assembly for the EC35. With that, you can start scanning essentially. Um, the final thing you have to be aware of after you've put in your holder and you've gotten your tubes is that your rotation needs to be correct. So you want to have this uh, sitting up and uh, then you can loosen this thumb screw on top and that will let you rotate this tube. It, so now I can't rotate it and then untightening it again I can. I like to just put it on the table and that usually keeps it quite flat and then looking on the screen having focused the lens you'll see that the frame is either crooked or straight. You want to have it straight so that the film comes out uh, as, a, as a straight um, frame relative to the sensor. Um, once this is done, you can use the uh, dials on the back to uh, set, uh, turn on and set the light source. Uh, you'll see that there are two dials. One is marked power and one is marked temperature. Temp. Uh, the power one we for scanning, focusing on things you can do on a lower power setting, but for scanning we recommend just turning it all the way up. It is a stepless dial, but just push it all the way to maximum power. Um, then on the temperature side, you'll see in the manual there's a recommendation to scan on a cold setting when you're um, scanning negative film, on a kind of white middle point setting when you're scanning um, black and white film and on the warmest setting when you're scanning slide film. You do keep in mind that you still have to white balance your slide film. Um, but this will just give you the best results. It's not terribly important, you will get good results from essentially any of these settings, but it's a nice little addition, additional quality um, from uh, just from doing a simple, simple thing on the light source. You'll also see on the back here that uh, there's a, a USB-C charging port the light does have a built-in battery. It lasts two, you know, two, two and a half hours from full charge. But uh, charging it, you can just do with a standard kind of phone charger with uh, USB-C. There is a um, included short USB-C cable that you can plug into any kind of computer. It's a bit slow, but it uh, works. But you can also use a, any phone charger. So um, to read more about recommended lenses, we're not going to go through this in this video, but you can go to our website, um, go to valoi.co slash easy35, and you'll see um, a guide on lenses, both how to find out what's compatible and what's not compatible, but also specific recommendations if you're looking to buy a lens to go with your easy35. So in the uh, next part, we're going to go th from this stage to actually scanning some film. So we'll go through some of the little details that you um, want to think about when you're scanning film and get the actual final um, file from the camera. And then in the final part, we're going to go through taking that from a uh, raw file into a final viewable kind of positive picture. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next part.